general that there's no need to change the the tables that uh, certain facilities are struggling to keep occupancy rates high you don't need any more um, staff's position is basically it's it's premature to take action on this case at this time with that I'll respond to your questions questions of the staff uh, presentation at this time okay uh, to the applicant chairman uh, supervisors mr. CEO council thank you for the opportunity to get in front of you again um, I'm here is, with uh, I'm sorry your name is oh my name is Jed Ayers and thank I'm you. here with uh, my business partner Noah Shepard and our uh, legal representation Jared Carter We've uh, prepared some materials for you. I want to make sure you all have them. We delivered them last uh, week, uh, a binder that's tabbed. Hopefully you all have that. Um, we also have a presentation, um, about a dozen slides that we want to give to you at this time. I'll So I think we've introduced ourselves before, but uh, both Noah and I are lifelong residents and grew up in Mendocino. Um, the McCallum House was actually where we both uh, had our first jobs, and uh, it was kind of a dream for us to be able to return back to Mendocino and um, run this uh, this business. And we've, uh, over the last six years, been able to expand it uh, with you know some of the other properties that weren't uh, doing as well, and uh, you know increase the number of units that we had and. The uh, McCallum Suites is a property we bought in 2004, and uh, so I'm going to quickly share with you the agenda that we have for the day. Get this thing to work. So, uh, Jer I'm going to turn it over to Jared, and he's going to uh, give a quick legal presentation. He's done some work on some of the uh, case studies out there, and um, done a, a significant amount of research on the history of this. And um, so he's going to he's prepared some. Uh, some detail around this project he's also given you a, a letter I think that's in your uh, packet that we gave you earlier um, last week I'm gonna uh, take it over from there and go through a, a very brief historical timeline I think you're all pretty familiar with it and review some of the re relevant staff findings uh, from the town plan update that's just been completed then share with you what we believe the two options for approval are um, today and uh, I want to uh, address head-on some of the objections that um, I'm sure you'll hear today and you've heard before and uh, some of our remarks around those and then really just conclude quickly with the slide on uh, you know why I think uh, you can vote for this project today so with that I'll turn it over to Jared for a short uh, presentation thank you uh, Jed uh, members of the board I'm Jared Carter um, I have submitted to you a, uh, a letter. I hope you have it in your uh, package. Um, I personally don't think the uh, legal issues are very significant, and I certainly don't agree with uh, the staff's position that it's premature for uh, you to act. Uh, it is, there are a couple of points that have been made at time, from time to time in the past that somehow or other a decision rendered in 1992 by uh, Judge Cox has something to do with what your power and authority is. That is not true. I've explained that in the letter I gave you and I've got a copy here to give you of a 2004 order that um, in effect completely amends and expunges the uh, the Cox order and the last paragraph of which says the court hereby dismisses this action in its entirety and surrenders all continuing jurisdiction over the parties and or properties in this manner so let me make sure you have a copy of that the other issue that is uh, often talked of to say that this uh, board should not act, that any act is, is premature, is the statement that you can't act until you have a general plan amendment amending 
one or more tables in the general plan. That is not true <coughs> for uh, two separate and independent and adequate reasons. The first is, as held by the various cases I've cited from pages four to five of the, uh, the letter, what is required for a governing body like yours to take an action, like approving a subdivision or approving an application of this type, is consistency with the general plan, and in this case, the LCP. Your action has to be consistent with the LCP. Now, there was a time when the courts believed that <coughs> if a proposal was inconsistent with any provision in the governing plan, then it could not be found to be consistent with the plan. Not, not an unreasonable position. But the cases that I've cited have held now for some time that there's no requirement of consistency with each and every provision of a governing plan. What is required is consistency with the major policies and objectives of the plan. And who initially determines that? You do. So if staff says, we think this, and you think something else, what you think controls. The other reason that I believe and I haven't found any particular cases that's 100% on point on this. But the other reason I believe that there can be no requirement that this project be found to be consistent with table whatever that table number is. I'm, I, I'm apologizing to you for forgetting, and I think it's 13.1 or so, something like that. But there can be no requirement of consistency with that table because your plan itself and state law requires review and amendment on a periodic basis. Your plan itself says that the tables have to be reviewed and updated, I think it's every three years, maybe it's every four years. Well, it's, it's now been 16 years, hasn't it? I think it was 1992. And there's been no completed review and amendment. And so my contention is that no one can deny an applicant the right to have a project approved that is in fact consistent with the major objective of balance between visitor serving facilities, residential and commercial, 